Ah, there we go. Hello, people, and welcome. Um, as you can see, we're doing a, a little bit uh, different today. Today we're playing some Kerbal Space Program. Haven't played this game in a very, very long time. Played it during the, the beta before the game was, I think it's probably released now. Yeah, 1.3. So yes, it would be probably released now. So I am way, way out of... Um, out of, I'm not up to date with what's going on in Kerbal Space Program, and um, it's good to be back. I played a little bit on the 10 hours 10 game stream, um, and that was got uh, got my interests sparked again to go try to go back in. And since I played Elite Dangerous for 10 hours on Saturday live on uh, on stream, I decided to play something a little bit different today. So that's what we're going to do today. And uh, as Henrik has already said, we want to complete that Anaconda. Uh, the Anaconda is actually, um, let's resume that save actually. There we go. The Anaconda is actually already pretty, pretty good, I think. I mean, it, it, no spoilers, but there might be a video about that tomorrow. But you can get a, hold on. You get a little preview. It looks pretty much identical to uh, to the one we had. Um, the exterior, at least, is very. Uh, some more air intakes here, um, but we can, we can very quickly try to give this uh, guess, give this thing a fly just to see how it goes. Um, again, I'll have something up on this tomorrow as well. But uh, let's try to take this and uh, let's see if I can remember the command here. Look at it go! As you can see, I've already, I have tweaked this quite a bit, and it's decent. I mean, it's flying, but we still have issues. You can see here, it's not stable. And that's because if we look at this from the front, we can see these surfaces here. These are what's giving us problems, because when the air hit these, it wants to push the nose downwards. So. To counteract that, you can see all these uh, RCS thrusters firing, and it is draining our oxidizer, but it's not that bad. It's not as bad as it could be, um, but they are draining. But again, we're not draining it that fast. Uh, we have to start with a little bit less fuel than we normally, normally would, otherwise we... Um, we are going to be too heavy to take off. And another neat trick, if you can see this, there is actually two engines here. You see this one there, one there. These are two engines in each side to give me more thrust because otherwise uh, it was simply just underpowered in terms of uh, in terms of thrust. So we're going to try and that, that, that it's, it flies and it's going to run out of fuel and it's going to be unstable and we're going to fall down into the ocean or something like that. But for now, I'm pretty happy with where the uh, where the anaconda is as uh, as a as a thing that was built very quickly during a live stream. I'm pretty happy with it. Um, and again, I have not been playing this game for a very long time, so as it is, it's actually decent, I think. See how high we're gonna go. We got some decent speed. We're approaching almost we're gonna make it to 200. I think we are. Look, our our oxidizer consumption has now gone way down because, of course, now we're so high up that the um, that the air is so thin that it's not going to affect the aerodynamics that much anymore. But that, of course, also means that these engines are going to lose their thrust. Look how who the thrust is dropping now because we're getting less and less air, of course. You know, we'll hear them throttling down very quickly now, and we're also running out of fuel, so we're both running out of fuel and air. Need more thrusters. Yeah, this is actually, I mean, this is an altitude record for this, uh, for the Anaconda. This is the highest it's ever gone. 20 kilometers is pretty decent. As you now, our speed is dropping as we're running out of fuel. The engines is, there we go, burnt out. No more air. So let's see how high we're gonna go. Oh, yeah, another thing I noticed. Look at this, look at this. I mean... This looks like an anaconda, right? Kind of. I 
I think at least it looks kind of like an undercutter. Let's get out here, see. Okay, we are now falling. Oh, and the engine started up again. <laughs> they won't last for long. They're gonna run out of fuel very quickly now. There we go. And I think these are also using... Using some, uh, some normal fuel. Because this thing is... Yeah, now we're gonna fall back. Anyway, let's, uh, let's revert the flight now that we're falling back. Um... Space plane hangar. So anyway, that that's the state of the anaconda. I'm gonna leave that there for now because today I I want to try to just get back into the game, try to to build something not too complicated. A downward for cubula. Ah, yeah, the front too. That's true. You could do something like that. Use one of these. Uh, that one. Right. And use that as the as the front of the ship and you could do a lot more to to make it look a lot more like an anaconda but uh, I'm gonna leave it there for now okay but I think what I want to try today is just a very simple um, space shuttle design and maybe that's a little bit too big I want to build a fairly maybe we should just do a full-size space shuttle um, just because I think it's something that's Doable. Maybe we should actually build. Can you still? Uh, can you still do like sub? You used to be able to do sub uh, sub modules, something like that. Oh, it already has a lot of stuff in in here. A SpaceX rocket. Again, I want to try to do something fairly simple. I have not played this game for about two years, so I really need to get back into the whole... But uh, you, you used... To, can you guys remember this? It used to be able to be... Advanced mode. Uh, uh, okay. Sub assemblies. Here we go. Sub assembly. Okay, okay. We can we can make sub assemblies. Yes, I found it. Thanks a lot. Uh, again, <laughs> long time ago. Let's build the. Um, let's build just a simple simple structure over here uh, monopropellant yeah let's put a monopropellant there let's keep our center of mass showing maybe not put the monopropellant there actually because our wing our main lift is going to be way back so to make this as stable as possible I want to have the, the cargo hold first mm. oh, what is this Engine mount. Okay. Let's try that later. Payload. Ah, it's on the payload now. Should we should we build something smaller? I feel like this is gonna be too big to start out with. Uh let's try something smaller. So we're gonna take a note like that, very aerodynamic. I'm gonna go into payloads. We're gonna get ourselves a decent sized hangar here. Which we're going to close. Whoop. And we're gonna go into fuel tanks. That's engines, those are fuel tanks. Monopropellant tank. I 
mean, this is this is gonna be for small satellites. Can we make these smaller? What is the difference between these two? F fuel. Oh, this is liquid. Oh, this is for rockets. We probably want that. And we need some modern pellet though, but I might be able to store that somewhere else because. Let's do that and some engines. Something not too big. Uh, preferably, it should be rockets. Right? I mean, these are gonna be. These are gonna fit, really? Because these are vector engines, right? Yeah, liquid fuel vector engines. Which is gonna be important later on. That's that's pretty good. The wings. Can we go wings? Yes. Can we have like Wow, this is a long, long time ago. Delta wing. Let's start with a delta wing all the way here to the front. Let's have our center of mass, center of lift. Oh wow, center of mass is way back. And what these are actually, these delta wings here are too steep to start with. We need something like a structural A wing, yes. Just to try and get that space shuttle look. And then these will need. Nope. These will need to be extending. And then we can put the delta wings on here at the side. Yeah, I think maybe it's too... Um... It might be too rear heavy. Alright, let's take this off. And this. Oh. Oh. Move the fuel tank forward, cargo in the middle. Hello and welcome. Uh, let's move that back. Oh, great. That's not half bad, is it? Maybe those wings are a little... Little too much. What happens if we just put these on again? Some landing gear. I mean, just gonna do something quick here. Large. Extra large. Medium size, that's too big. One of those there, and then just a single one at the front. Curved wings at the back. What are curved wings? As, are you talking about sweat wings? What is this? Ah, air brakes. Wow, they're big. Uh, 
and then just a very simple tail like that Parabolic wings? No, I only have st I have no mods on this at all at the moment. Okay, for a for a very basic, very basic loadout, I think this thing might just do it. We have no RCS, we have no stability control, but let's just start and see how this thing flies. If it's even. Oh wow! Holy crap! Okay, it's unstable. Holy crap, that was a lot of power. Okay, here's what I want to see. That is... How? What? See, this is a problem. Wait. Am I out of power? No, I still have electrical charge. I just have no control over the aircraft. It's just gone into a flat spin. This is not... This is not good. <laughs> okay, let's try to uh, revert that because uh, we need to make that more stable. Yeah, it, changing out those, I will probably need the delta winglets back here so I get more. Okay, they're they're Olympic, huh? Delta wings. So I get more wing area here at the back. It does make this very, very big, but, um... So how does this look? Center thrust. Now we know that it has plenty of thrusts. They are pretty much on top of each other. The center lift. So ideally, I probably want it to move. My center of mass forward, right? So my center of mass, my center of lift is behind it. So it will have... It will have a tendency to be more stable in the air, right? My center of mass should be f in the front. So if we take a larger fuel tank, this is going to be way bigger than first plant. Something like that instead. Vitsta, thank you guys for subscribing. I think this is more stable. It looks cool though. Look at that. Because now our center of mass should be in front. Didn't even check it, but... I just assumed. We have more fuel. So a teeny, teeny bit of thrust to get us started. But what I'm, my main purpose right now is not to see how it performs. When it flies powered, I'm more interested to, to see its... Uh, it's glide characteristics, because when this thing is going to return, we're going to be out of fuel anyway. What? Did it just burn out? Oh, we are the oxidizer. Wow. Huh. 
How do we get out of Dr. Dice so quick? Oh, this only has liquid fuel. Oops, I took the wrong engine. Okay, that's okay. Okay, it has a little bit of a tendency to, uh, to be nose heavy now. But it glides pretty well. Okay, that's the air brakes. We need more flaps, right? Because you can see we're having problems getting enough control here. Let's try to put the landing gear down. Pull our nose up and break and break everything. Great. <laughs> Should we just build it bigger? I mean, now it's getting big anyway. We might as well. Ah, oh, of course. We burned out that tank so quickly that we had a lot of fuel up here. That's why it was so heavy. So if we change this out for the right type of tank. So if we, instead of taking that, we take this one. Yes, exactly. And break and break everything. There we go. Okay. Now we have way more fuel because of the increased number, amount of oxygen. Thanks a lot for subscribing. Welcome. Let's try to see how that performs. It's a little bit less blowing up every time. Oh, I forgot to put on more... F uh, oh, okay. I'll do that in a bit. S a little bit of thrust. See, it's a lot easier to maneuver now that... Uh, let's actually make a more realistic scenario here. Let's empty this thing for fuel. There we go. That's our burnout. Let's climb. Get some at altitude here. We might have to go and make it a B2 at uh, the other... The, whoa! Okay, got some weird things going on there when I got... Uh, when I dropped below Mark 1. And we're spinning out of control again, so don't do any aggressive maneuvers. At least it tries to... Which way are we falling? And can we get this under control? Okay, never mind. Revert flight. Let's build something bigger. <laughs> now that we're doing it anyway. Because I want to keep it very small, but now it's growing to a size where, well, we're just going to build this anyway. Okay, so this will need... What will this need? It will need fuel. And a cargo hold. Big cargo hold. Let's... I don't know if that's too big. The other cargo was too big. Let's try that. And then it had that weird... Was that another fuel tanks? Where was it? I found that weird thingy before. 
Was it structural? No. Storage. Where was that engine mount? I wanted to see what that does. Uh, I know I saw this somewhere. Thermals, landing gear, we'll go for that in a bit. Aerodynamics, nope. There's this cargo thingy, which is not really what we want, but... Coughlings, no. Structural. Nope, not here either. It's going okay. I can't find the module I want, but uh, random control engines. It must be in here then. Anyone remember where that thing was? It was here a moment ago. It was like uh, the Mark III engine mount. Oh, there it is. Because I think this one will then have engines. We, we can fit engines to this one, right? So I can fit... Oh, can you just fit anything to this any way you want? Okay, I'm pretty happy with how this looks right now. One thing though, I want this. I know that they are not really needed, but they just look cool. <laughs> okay, then for wings. Hehe. <laughs> Small stubby wings. Oversized tail fin? I don't know. It's way oversized. These are definitely too small. Um What do we have? Into the cell. We'll start with these here at the front. Like that. And then we'll need to build this along the length of the aircraft. There we go. Then these will go there. This will go here, 
And Delta Wings. Okay. Parachute, parachute. I'm thinking of having a, a drogue chute to apply if we can find a place to put them. Apparently not. Attach Kerbals to the wing. More power. For now we're just gonna make something that's landable. And we'll worry about all that stuff afterwards. Extra large, is that too big? No. Okay, maybe it is. Just to see if this thing will uh, will even take off. Oh, we have no. Never mind. Okay, let's just see how it flies. We have no. Uh, <laughs> we have no uh, flaps, so we're gonna have a hard time controlling this. But uh, that never stopped anyone. I mean, predictably. It is very difficult to lift up when we have no flaps. Why does it tilt to the side? Okay, never mind. <laughs> Aerodynamics. Uh, what are these? Oh, these are decent. Nope. Okay, let's see if we can get this thing. At least the head is like the real shuttle, like a brick. Or maybe we should just go away from the delta wing design and do something a little bit more simple. Yeah, I should probably turn off the thruster gimbling when in the atmosphere. But it's pretty much the only thing that allows me to turn right now.
I mean, it's not easy to control, that's for sure. But it glides okay. Question is how much control I have over it when it comes to turning in, because I'm not gonna miss the landing, that's for sure. Question is, can I recover from a dive like this? Because I'm coming down very, very quickly. I would really love this thing to slow down. Because we're run, gonna run out of... And everything explodes. <sighs> I don't know, man. Let's try something different. Let's go a completely different route. I want to try to go back to the small, uh, the small design. And go away from the delta, the delta wing. Um, so let's put a large cargo hold on this, and. Inverted wings? <laughs> Maybe. Okay, can we found some, find some engines that are not as overpowered? We will still need them to be able to function in space. And I really like these vector engines because of the large vectoring angle, 10 and a half degrees. I mean, look at some of the standard engines, vectors only three degrees, which is why I really like these. Even though they are way overpowered for what we're doing. So what can we do in terms of wings? Can we just put, like... It's gonna be a glider anyway, right? Oh yeah, and then now we have the problem with... Uh, Go. Center of mass is way back right now. So this is not going to be stable. Are those engines really that heavy? It must be the engines that are so heavy that they're pulling the center of mass back four tons per engine we need something smaller these engines are way big i think oh these will vector eight degrees And these are only the point. See, this is going to be a lot lighter. Which of these has the large gimbling angle? This one has the gimbling. You add more fuel to the front, but then it just looks stupid. <laughs> we could do that. And then a tail fin. Or two of them.
This should in theory fly. Oh yeah, the set of mass will move a lot when the fuel tank is empty. So when the fuel tank is empty, they are pretty much on top of each other. Okay, so what do I want my center of mass to move forward? Okay, here's a stupid idea. Engines in the front. What if we put engines like this? And then put wings on that. Maybe not these, these wings were very big. What the hell is this? Oh, this is a tail fin. A very large one, but it's a tail fin. I don't know what the goal of it is. Um, I was planning just to build something that could carry a small satellite, but every time it ends up just being way bigger than I I planned it to be. Okay, how about this? What if... Send a thrust too far forward? Yeah, probably right. And then when the tank is empty, this one's empty, this one's empty. Oh yeah, and this will be empty too. It will pretty much be at the center. Let's just try to see how this handles. Uh, I want to get this thing flying. This is about, I don't want this to be much bigger than this. I want to keep it small. Oversized flaps. Okay, landing gear. Uh, that size should do it. There we go. Looks stupid, but uh, let's see what happens. Oh, I forgot to put fuel in somewhere. At least it maneuvers very well. Let's try to again get some uh, some altitude, and let's uh, burn all our fuel so we get into a scenario that would be resembling re-entry. There's actually some decent delta V in this thing. 
I don't have any. I do not have any. Uh, any air brakes or anything like that. Oh, don't want to slip too too far off the airstream. Not enough petrol. I know, but we're gonna strap this onto a rocket in a little bit. Look at this glide, though. I mean, can I pull this up so we get the nose up a bit? Yeah. I, mean, I could keep it in the airstream for. Okay, let's try to nose dive this thing to get some. Uh, to get some speed up. Have a view from the cockpit. That's not a lot of. Uh, <laughs> that's not a lot of a viewing angle you have out of those windows. Yeah, Kerbal multiplayer would be awesome. I know there are mods, <laughs> but still. Okay, let's not put too much strain on the aircraft here. See, this is where we need the air brakes. Let's do some aggressive maneuvers here to try and bleed off... Whoops. Some of our speed. Back down to a uh, to a respectable speed. We're still very high, though, for a for landing. But speed is uh, beginning to look promising. Oh wow, this thing is difficult to maneuver. Okay. But look how slowly we're, go how go we're going right now. Uh. Okay, apart from me f messing up the landing, <laughs> I think this is okay. Yes, let's revert this to the hangar. And then we could go sub assemblies. Can we take the whole thing? No. Can we take just this? Okay, uh, we can only take subsections of it, so we can take that and call this for shuttle body. Okay, let's. Uh, how do I go back? Uh, okay, here we are. Now we're back. Good. It's sort of saved. Let's take that. We'll take our sub assembly. Put that there. Landing gear. Wow, there's a lot of stuff you can put on the landing gear. Anyway, uh, start retracted. And we're gonna need medium landing gear. Put that on there and start retract. Okay, 
So here we have the base. This is going to be a shuttle. Can we zoom out a bit? Yes, thank you. So I guess we should... Coupling? Was coupling a separate thing? Structural? No? Oh yeah, coupling. There we go. Um, we need to put a radial decoupler on here. Is that going to be too weak? Where's the center of mass? It's there, so let's put it up here high. You can actually save the entire craft and load it in here. Okay, I didn't know. That's new. Or at least to me it's new. Uh, why I'm looking at engines, I'm looking at fuel tanks. I mean, we could go with like the standard big huge orange, but I think they're too small. I want something bigger. If there is anything bigger. Is that really the largest tanks available? Build it out like that. That's going to be massive, though. Oh, there are these, of course. The Saturn rocket parts kind of thingy. Thingies. Let's put that on there. That on there. That thing it goes there, and underneath goes some huge, massive engines. They're just vectoring. The vectoring is okay. Two degrees is not a lot, but we'll have it. Will have to do. Uh, more fucking fuel tanks. Structural. Give this thing a like a nose cone. No, that's too small. Aerodynamics, maybe? For a nose cone? Yes. Oh, okay. Oh yeah, I could use snapping mode, yeah, for centering the front landing gear. You see, this is why I wanted a lot of gimbling on these engines, right? Because... But what I'm afraid will happen is when this thing takes off, the back of this will uh, will bump into uh, into the main engine of the main uh, booster here. Uh, so we're gonna need something structural. The space duct tape. Oh, it was over there. So just put struts on. Yeah, exactly. Fuel lines into the plane as well. So we can... That's the right way, right? Yes. And we should probably do the same thing just to be absolutely sure that we don't drain that fuel tank down there either. So that the plane will keep itself fueled. No, oh, they're tiny. Oh, can we get... Either we build our own, or we just try... For now, let's just try and go with something. Again, I have not played this game in a very long time, so I just need something... Something that works. So 
So I'm not gonna bother building my own engines. I would probably do that if we don't have enough thrust to start with. Is that enough? They're gonna hit? Maybe they are. Maybe they're not. We'll have to find out. Is there somewhere? Ejection force on these? Ejection force. Yes. Okay. They're gonna be. Uh, they're gonna be fine. I think. Aerodynamics. Put a nose cone on it. And uh, let's try to s call this. Um, shuttle one. Save that. Okay, check our staging. Always check our staging, because this is all messed up. We have... Wait, what? This is all all messed up. Engines, you go there. Engines, you go there. Engines, you go there. Solids are too low. So, too small. I need to lower them. Okay. Like that. Okay, not quite centered, but that's okay. I mean, looks like a rocket, right? The question is, will it fly? Okay, let's check our staging again. Because now the staging is even worse. Okay, wait, so... Engine, you go there. Engine, you also go there. And releasing the clamps also go down there. Then we stage that. We stage that. And, oh, engine should go there. Okay. Save it and launch it. Either this is gonna end in a big ball of fire, which I'm expecting, or I'm gonna be extremely lucky. We should probably put some kind of RCS on this thing. Okay, can I, can I even remember how you launch a, sh a ship? Oh, well, let's see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> let's try that again, and let's remember to throttle up this time. Throttle up, SAS is on. Yeah, look at that, look at those gimbaled engines. This is going pretty well. Now I know the shuttle might not technically be needed here at the beginning. It's going to a... this is going to be what? A polar orbit? Yeah. But I think the reason is just to make this more stable because we have a lot of, of mass out here at the side. So to make that more, um, to make that more stable. Oh wow! Uh, map. Exactly. I mean, problem is, our center of mass is not at the center of the main rocket. It's like a skewed because of the, the shuttle. That's why I keep the engines on the shuttle doing launch. To try to counteract that torque that would otherwise be around the center of mass. And, as I said, I'm gonna hold the engines up there. I might as well use them.
I need to be careful here. Watch out when that thing... Uh. What the hell? I'm not sure this is going to be a very pretty orbit. But it's going to be an orbit. So this is new to me. This means we have radio control, I guess. Or have radio contact with the shuttle. So I guess... Uh, I have... See, that's the problem. I have no... Uh, I have not enough... Uh, I do not have enough control to... How much fuel is left in this tank? They're pretty much empty. Yeah, I need to ask yes to stop this. So, best I can do right now is eject that. And don't get hit. Damn it. What did we lose? We lost... Nothing. What did we lose? Did we lose anything? I think we're good. Uh, map. Okay. The decoupler? No, that's okay. Okay, so there's something like... Warp here? Is that a thing? Yes, it is. Wait, what? How do I have radio control? What do I have radio control with? That's the space center. Press F3 to tell me what blew up. Okay. Okay, but first order of business is to figure out where the planet is. There it is. First order of business would be to get this thing pointed in... ...direction, because we need to make sure we can actually get into orbit. What is that? Oh, shuttle one debris. There we go. Yeah, I know I can use the notes to plot the burn, but it doesn't matter. I, I can I can eyeball this. We got ourselves a polar orbit. And I think accept time acceleration. Yes. Look at it go. Whee. So do we understand this right? That these means there are already like notes scattered across the Planet. It looks like there are notes all over the planet I can contact. Like radio stations or something. Okay, let's try to stop and uh, let's do a deorbit burn. And let's see how this thing will react if we try to return from space with this. Wait. Nope. Wrong note. Should we try to, to make a landing spot here? Uh, no, let's start by just trying to take it down through the atmosphere. We'll practice landing on a specific spot later. Okay, so there are radio stations. Cool. Because back when I played it, I used to play with... Um, I can't remember the name. There was a mod that allowed you to... Um, that gave you the same effect, basically. Um, but there were only one station, and that was at the space center. So if you had, if you wanted something to be able to communicate, you had to build your own satellite network. Uh, 
It would make it harder, true. Okay, so now we got it well within the atmosphere. And we still have plenty of fuel, so I think fuel-wise we are doing okay. We have some fuel in case of emergencies. Look at the sunrise. Okay, let's try to time accelerate until we drop down to a, um, a more suitable orbit. Okay, we're getting closer. We probably want to maybe not completely belly flop into the atmosphere, but something somewhat close to actually, to try and bleed off as much of our speed as we can. So, microphones in the way, can't see my keyboard. Uh, let's see here. Angle of attack is... Ooh, is that? No, that's mountains. I thought it was clouds. So soon we're gonna hit the atmosphere. There we go. Two and a half thousand. That seems very fast. I have no idea how this will handle the heat. Yes, remote tech. That's the one. And I would guess that mod is still here, but with the main reason I played it was because I liked the uh, idea of having to build your own satellite network first. I am planning to begin a, a Kerbal Space Program series on the, on the channel to upload videos. And I would probably play without all the radio stations, because I think it's a little bit more fun. Oh, look at that. This is going okay so far. Look at the flaps though. We're bleeding off speed. I don't know if I've got a mod it. Um, main problem is I have no idea what mods are actually available these days. Again, I have not really played this game actively in about two years or something similar. Uh, so I'm not 100% uh, percent sure. I think... I'm not sure I'm going to play career mode. I might want to play a science mode, if that's still a thing. Um, oh, no, 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 no. Okay, now the aerodynamics are beginning to kick in here. So we're losing the ability to slow us down this quickly. Look, this is where we're going to need the air brakes. But, I'm, yeah, I'm planning to make it somewhat kind of a, of a let's play. I mean, there is a lot of tweaking and testing stuff in Kerbal, so I might not make it... I mean, I might edit it heavily. Oh, God. Sort of get that nose up. How are we doing for a landing site? I'm aiming for the small island. You can see it out there in front of us. And as it looks right now, we're going to fall short of it. 
So that's why I'm trying to pull the nose up. Also, to bleed off speed. Maybe we shouldn't actually bleed off speed. Maybe we should just let it fall through the atmosphere. See, that's the island I want to land on. We are coming in a little short, I think. And also a little... Uh, oh, get my keys right here. Something is heating up. That's the cockpit. But I agree it could be more fun playing it with limited stuff, at least for the first series. I mean, if it's not going to be too long, then I can always mod the game later and do some other stuff then. See, this is where we really needed those, uh, because we are down to 17 kilometers and we are still, we are still burning. It's beginning to slow down now. Oh! Oops. Whoa. Wow. Rolling is, uh, it's twitchy. There we go. Just bleed off some speed. And pull up the nose. Oh, this is not as flat as I would have hoped. Oh, caps lock for fine control. Ah. Look how pleasant. So there's an open area over here. Let's try to aim for that. I like to try and take this down through the atmosphere without using engines. Because that's probably how it's going to work if this was to be built properly. I mean, if I were to use this in a campaign, I would probably try to build it to do the re-entry with next to no fuel. Right now we have some decent amount of fuel. We could probably burn this uh, for some time. Should we just make a quick test of our landing gear? Landing gear is fine. So right now we're actually just flying. Pretty damn stable. Slowly glide this thing down. What kind of range do those radio stations have? How far out do they go? Oh, that's the ground. Okay, so we can upgrade them to get longer range. Try to bleed off that last bit of speed. Don't want to land uphill, but... Uh, and... Hard on the brakes. And we're back! <laughs> the best of tennis can reach anywhere. Aww. And I'm gonna roll down the hill.
How far are we actually from the space center? Where's the space center? Okay, we're far away from the space center. Just want to try and empty this for fuel, do another landing. Try to come around again, see if we have enough uh, energy to try and... Bleeding off energy, try to get some altitude. Come back around, do another uh, another landing on that flat area there. But I'm pretty happy with its glide capabilities. I mean, we can go down to about 50 meters a second and still glide without any, uh, without stalling. And it's very stable. The cargo hold is not the biggest, but it's enough to, to launch small satellites. And maneuvering hard, lead off energy. Lead off more energy. There we go, around 50 meters a second. This is where it's beginning to be more difficult to control. Okay, it's actually still controllable at 40. And there we go again. Not too bad. I like this. I like this one a lot. Can you rescue this somehow? What's the... Bought action. Oh yeah, recover vessel. Whee! Okay. Cool. Ha! What time is it? Okay. Yes, we got absolutely nothing for that. So what should we do next? Now we have a space shuttle. I kind of got back into the... Kind of beginning to get a feel for... Th for the game again. That was a very successful test flight. For a... First test flight at least. Yeah, okay, you would still have to build satellite networks, because that was one of the things I found the most fun. That was building satellite networks, but if you suddenly just have antennas that can go anywhere... <laughs> the reason why before we had uh, a lot of oxidizer left and a little bit of fuel was because I put the wrong fuel tank on. I put on the fuel tank... This one that only contains liquid fuel. Or the other way around. It must be a, no, we had more fuel, not oxidizer left. I think that was the, the problem at least. Okay, we have this one saved, so. Oh, let's click here. New. Add nuclear engines and go to the moon with it. But it's not going to be able to land on the moon. Because it's a plane. There's no atmosphere there. So just... Could we build a quick moon thingy? I have not built moon rockets in a long, long time. Okay. Uh, we can go to the moon without nuclear engines, right? See, this is where I need... What's, what's the mod called? Kerbal Engineer. 
<laughs> and landed many <laughs> landed many planes on the moon. Yeah, of course. Uh, I do not. Oh no, we should probably have a decoupler there. Uh, something like that. Decoupler. This has a built-in heat shield, I guess. Ooh, that's a big decoupler. Nope. That one? Yes, that one fits. So we put... Yeah, problem is, if I have to eyeball the... Uh... The Delta V, it's gonna be difficult. Parachutes, maybe? Ooh, all kinds of fancy antennas. Relay antennas. <laughs> Communitron. Ah, cool. This is all new stuff to me. High gain antenna. Boop. <laughs> it does not have a heat shield. I'm going to dock in moon orbit and at this and the direct ascent. No, no, I know this is not a lot of speed. This is not going to take us to the moon. This is got just right now. I'm just building what I'm planning to take off with. Let's just try to put this on the landing pad just to see how how long this or how quickly this actually burns fuel. Because this will burn for a long time on this amount of fuel. And again, of course, this is not enough to lift it, but. Maybe I should add some kind of reaction wheel here. Like so, and maybe some, like... Solar, whoops, solar panels. And landing... Micro landing studs. Nah, they're probably too small. They're probably too big, but uh... yeah, yeah, these are not gonna work in Atmos, I know, but they are gonna meant for flying us, lifting us off from the moon, and I hope they can do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so thrust in the atmosphere is 15 uh, kilonewton and 60 in space in vacuum. So, so that's okay. I think this is going to be able to lift us off the moon. Maybe a parachute would be a good idea. And lots of new science stuff as well. Survey scanner. Did I spot mining equipment earlier? Infrared telescope. Ooh. I think I spotted some mining equipment at some point. Or was I completely wrong?
Yeah, yeah, mining extractor. So what can they do? Mine for fuel. Yeah, okay, cool. And Convertrons. Yeah, get a, f a refueling station. That's a good idea. Launch escape system. Don't need that. Oh, that's too big. Probably go with this one. Good. Okay, let's just, uh, just to make this pretty. Aerodynamics. Could have sworn that I saw... Are they heavy? Too heavy? Too heavy landing gear? Like these instead? Uh, oh yeah, here we go. Actually, you know what? Uh, could we? Nope, could we? We need a decoupler. Decouple, decoupler, decoupler. Are they built in, in this? In these? Okay, people are saying maybe a decoupler first. Yes. And then let's use this to just upscale this anyway, because I probably want a bigger rocket underneath this anyway. So if we put like this, that goes like this, and then... Blow up the ferry by activating the engines. Okay, wait, so, uh, remove fairing, decouple. And that's starting that engine. Yes, so so far we're good. We have the top of our spacecraft. So let's build the thingy that's going to boost us to the moon. More reaction wheels. Do they come this size? Hey, they do. Oh, no, that's not what I want. That's what I want. And we probably want more of these because... Otherwise, we're going to run out of power. And I don't want to do that. So engines, I have no idea what I'm doing. Uh, this one looks cool. Oh, it's too big. That's too small. That's too big as well. Uh, what about this mainsail engine? Yes, boom, mainsail. Okay, don't need the. Oh, okay, the engines generate electricity. Great. Making a shuttle? No. We are just making a... We had to just build a shuttle. Now we're trying to build something that, should, that will just take us to the moon and back. Moon and back. Moon and back. Uh, okay, coupling. Let's put that on there. How are these for size?
Yeah, that's right. I could jettison the fairing. That's that's probably right. Yeah. I don't know. This is gonna have a lot of thrust initially. I think. Okay, the small then just not make electricity. Oh, this has become way more complicated when, since I played this last time. I like it. Okay. So, boosters, mainsail engines. Get rid of the boosters and... I don't know. It seems a little bit overkill for a moon rocket, but... Um, Let's try it, see what happens. Now I have to remember, how do I get into a proper orbit? I need to head out that way. Too many boosters, that's wasteful. Oops, that was a quick save. Oh, do I have are any of these gimbled? Oh, let's fire up the mainsail as well. Separatrons. Oh, well. Is this the right direction? I think it is. I think maybe you're right about too many boosters. Because my mainsail is running at very low power. And wow, well, we're way high up. And we're going way quick. begin to flatten our trajectory. Luckily there are some gimbling on the mainsail. Okay, let's uh, let's not boost that uh, that app apps any higher. Let's move up. And then circularize our... Yeah, 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 way too high, I know. But we're gonna hit moon anyway. Let's... Oh, can we see fuel? Not the prettiest orbit, but it will do. No one year round, but I guess we should add a maneuver node about here. That was pretty well eyeballed, if I have to say it myself. Oh, hold on. And increase it, increase it, increase it. Can we get it if we move this a little bit? Problem is we're gonna come in and we're gonna have way much power here. Moon, I think, I think Moon, not Minmus this time. Because look at that. We are going to fly by the Moon, but we are going to come in with a lot of speed doing that.
that's just going to slingshot us right out of the system. Yeah, we can do a gravi gravitational assist by, yeah, but do we want to do that? Do we want to? No. Ugh. Can we cancel that maneuver? There we go. Let's make a new one. Okay, so we need to go to the left of the moon, because right now we're coming in behind it. You see, we want to come in in front of it. So that would be something like that. Yeah, look at that. Can we tweak this? Ever so slightly. Oh. Oh, no. Something like that. That's very close, though. That should do it. Oh, how are we doing for electricity? We're doing good for electricity. So now we just go like... Uh, Warp here. You can right click on the. I can right click on the periaps. Oh, can you? Can I make it? Ooh, I can make it stick to the maneuver node. That is handy. Maneuver node. Okay, I don't know how much time it's going to take us to get 700 meters per second of delta V. But I'm guessing not that long. Yeah, top right. Uh, let's see. Let's try. Okay. We can go closer. Let's do a maneuver. What happened there? Not quite what we wanted, but... Uh, oh, this is twitchy though. Oh wait, that will have to do. Ah, okay, so I can click on it, so I can keep, so I can... Ah, okay, got it, got it, got it. How much fuel do we have left? Look at that. That is, uh, that's pretty good. <laughs> that's no fuel left at that stage. We should probably actually, uh... Ditch the fairing. Whee! And then we should go in here. And then we should go here. And go walk to here. I could walk to just before the periaps. You know what? We're going to do that. Let's walk to about there.
Beautiful. So let's flip this thing around. And... Uh, okay, we're still quite far from the periaps. That moon looks beautiful. They did change that. It looks a lot better than it used to. Okay, let's uh, move a little closer. To round about there. There we go. That was the last fuel we had left in the stage. Now I'm nervous. If we have enough fuel to land and get us back. But uh, I guess there's only one way to find out. But that is draining way quicker. I think we will have enough fuel to land. If you don't waste too much landing, you should be more than fine. Well, here's the trick. I haven't played this in a long time. <laughs> okay, let's, uh, let's warp over here because I want to land on the day side. How do I still have contact with Kerbin? I can't see Kerbin. Okay, so we're now on the night side, so let's... Uh let's perform that deorbit burn. Yeah, yeah, we are in sandbox mode. Uh, but again, I've never played with these. Okay, there we go. And I did waste quite a bit of fuel because of my orbit was so high in uh, around Kerbin. That's Kerbin. One, uh, Ah! Yeah, point retrograde, yes! Okay, just begin to slow us down here. Not too much though. I'm not sure. I should really burn at the very last moment, right? So I need to to not do this right now. Yeah, yeah, landing gear. Landing gear will be fine. Look at that. That's too big of an issue right now. Okay, I think I'll begin to slow down. This is beginning to look a little quick to me.
Let's begin to do a little bit more aggressive in terms of... Oh. Don't kill our speed completely. So far, this is looking like a pretty decent landing to me. Oh, there's our shadow. No, 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 no. Ha ha! We did a thing. We are on the surface of the moon. But I don't think that's enough fuel to get us home. Contact light? What? Aim for about eight. I was thinking of going straight back for... For Kirpen. Um... Because probably what I want to do, because this, if I go out, let me think here. So moon is, is moving in this direction over here. And I want to slow my orbit. So I actually want my burn, my main burn to be in this direction, right? So I'm slowing my orbit down compared to Kerbin. So what I probably want to do is this is actually not a bad bad position to be in. I'll fly towards Kerbin and just get enough so I can get out here on the inside of the moon and then I'll do my main burn there to uh, to escape, I guess, and I hope that's going to be good enough. Ah, contact light what they said with it. Ah, yeah, I get it. So um Kerbin, where are you? That's this. Oh, I see it. Oh, that's beautiful. No, 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 no. Okay. Let's uh, let's see what we can do here. Oh, SIS on. Landing gear up. Uh, let's actually just do that. We already burned about half of fuel. Don't think. Let's just see that we're actually doing what I'm planning to do. Moon. We should have Kerbin up here. Yes.
It just seems counterintuitive to increase our... Is this treatment right? I think it's right. Okay. So that went okay so far. Let's warp to our periaps. Oh, that's a lot of altitude we need to kill. You should have enough fuel. Uh, that's not a lot of fuel, dude. <laughs> Let's see what happens. Let's point Retrograd. It's dropping quickly though, but that's my fuel as well. I know I could just burn, and it's not going to make any difference how quickly I burn. We, okay, so 17 kilometers is the target here. That's not enough. No! Look at that! That is so close! Yeah, I know. 17 kilometers to... Yeah, get out and push. Oh yeah, yeah, I can do that. So I can now jettison. I don't need the engine anymore. I can jettison that. Uh, how do I EVA? EVA? Space to base. Yes, to let go. How do I ask? Yes. Come on, Jebediah! I think he is already oriented in the camera di camera direction. How are we doing though? Did we gain anything? Four, five, eight. Strip the heat shield. But uh, let me see how much we gained. Stripping the heat shield seems like a bad idea. I will just keep pushing until I have just enough propellant left to get back in. Yeah, it would really be a shame to, to uh, get it back in, uh, in beach at least. This uh, had a built-in heat shield, so you didn't have to fit one. But I can see that it would probably be a good idea to keep our heat shield right now. Save point four EVA propellant for returning to capsule. You could send a rescue mission. If all else fails. Yeah. <laughs> 
it's not gonna be enough. Where's the in entry hatch? F to grab. I have plenty of fuel left though. Oh, you can refuel inside the capsule. So are you saying if I go board and I go EVA? Haha! -ha! We are haha, -ha! okay, we're gonna make it. We are gonna make it. This is really the space version of get out and push. Oh, you can also see it up here in the corner. Ah, okay. To try doing Apollo 13. <laughs> yeah, I, I need the fuel rats. Where are the fuel rats? Oh my god. <laughs> okay, how are we doing? Oh, so close. I don't know it too much. No, no, no. Of course not. I still just needed to get within the atmosphere. As soon as we're in the atmosphere, we're pretty much good to go. Because even though we might have to do a quick arrow breaking maneuvers and go through the atmosphere a few times, we will we will eventually make it there. Oh, I should probably try to go back in to the spaceship again. B for board. Look at that! <laughs> Just a little bit more. I mean, it's not important how low it gets. I can always go around and do a second trip. And it will be fine. How are we doing? Oh, oops. I know we are technically above, but uh, uh, no, what's up? Up, up, up. Forty-three. I like that. I'm gonna keep it there. I would rather skip off the atmosphere and come back for a second try, than uh, 
be to board, then have to <laughs> to burn up on the way in. And let's just warp here. Whee! Oh, should I have added a uh, decoupler for the heat shield? So we've got rid of it. I don't know how heavy it is. Yeah, that's a pretty fast re-entry. That was close though. <laughs> oh, now we are rising again. Looks like we are going to skip off the atmosphere. We could do the rest of the mission inside the cockpit, that would be pretty fun, I think. See, we are now... ...increasing our speed, oops. Here we see the radar altitude. And we're back in space. Yeah, I think next uh, next flight I should get me home. anything more accurate than this because I have no idea how many times this has been going around now our speed is still dropping that means we are still going and of course the altitude is also increasing so we st so we still haven't reached um, we're still not falling back yet we will be as soon as we hit that uh, that note there. See, there we go. Now we're falling back.
Look at that though. Um, jettison the model pellet? No, I should probably have left it out when we uh, when we left to start with. Question is, hmm. is this going to be where we hit the atmosphere? Nope. That means we are still. Quite high up. Okay, gonna take another trip. I think next time here, this is gonna be uh, gonna be. It. I think we are a hundred kilometers up now. I think we're at ninety now. Looking at the speed, at least it seems plausible. No. We are still falling, so at least we're going in the right direction. Oh, there we go. That's the atmosphere. Yep. Wow, we are falling quickly though. Every time the small one turns, that's a kilometer. We should begin to see some burning. I'm going to try to land it from within the cockpit. That's pretty fun. Just going to keep a close eye on this. Whee. Oh, here we go. Just below 50. Now approaching 40 kilometers. Oh no, come on, come on, keep falling, keep falling. Don't. Don't go for another round. <laughs> I don't want to go up again. And we're at 42. Pretty much flying horizontally right now, and no, we are still falling very slowly, though. Yep. 
it stopped. Oh, no, 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 we are increasing altitude again. Question is, will we burn enough? Will bleed off enough speed on this return on this uh, burn that we will be able to drop back down because it's not increasing very quickly. I think we're going to be able to burn off enough that we're not going to leave the atmosphere. Look now, it stopped again. So right now we're just making S turns up and down in the atmosphere. And there we go. We are now falling again. Nice. Yeah, I know. But there's not a lot I can do about it. I mean, it's not like I can get out and... Uh, yeah, I have to... I'm, I'm falling again. And I know that I'm burning up my heat shield. But... At this point, it's too late to do much about it. Yeah, exactly. We're not going to go out and push right now. That would be uh, would be a pretty bad idea. Now, I don't think the uh, I don't think the space suits are that well insulated that we want to do that. But it's not burning the, my uh, my heat shield that quickly right now. I think we're good. I think we're gonna make it. At least we passed below. Below 40 kilometers. Our speed is not dropping as quickly as I would like it to. But it should drop faster and faster. Uh, the further we get into the atmosphere. You can see our descent seems to be increasing. Yet our... We're not pointing that much downwards, really. so we're pretty much still flying right at the horizon. So, but again, I think heat shield's gonna make it. Look how quickly we're losing speed now. We should begin to see uh, our retrograde note pointing more and more upwards, so more and more into the blue. Press F5. Yeah, I know F5 is quick save, but that's not fun. And I can't do anything anyway. I mean, <laughs> the only thing I can do is sit and watch and wait to deploy the parachute. Okay, so now we're at almost at 20 kilometers, 22 kilometers. We're still slowing down. 21 kilometers. Still slowing down. And we're gonna have to... When we get closer, begin to watch our radar altitude. Three hundred meters a second, thirteen kilometers up. Look at that. We are now beginning to uh, to slow down enough that we are beginning to fall directly straight down, which is good. Eleven kilometers. Soon we'll begin to gain speed again. I think. Deploy at two hundred meters per second. I'm going to deploy at around five hundred meters up. And I hope we have slowed down enough by then. Oh. Here we go. Dropping down below. That's our parachute. No, it was too late! No! <laughs> oh, 
Oh, now I feel sad. Revert to launch. No, no, no. Oh, well. Should have made that quicker. Anyway, <laughs> that's a shame. Oh, well. Good, it's only sandbox mode. Um, I am probably going to start a, a series where I'm going to play this through probably. Oh, not the monolith. Um, exactly what the goal is going to be, I'm not really sure about. Can we go to, like, tracking station? Yeah, rip. <laughs> oh, we already have satellites. Oh, of course, we have everything unlocked. Or satellites. You, yeah, yeah, I know who respawned. That's okay. That's actually the next thing we could begin to look at. That's what kind of... I'm going to have a look. Uh, quit the main menu. What kind of options you have in terms when you when you start a new campaign? Like start new science campaign. Yes. And we can have like a funky flag or something. I like the science campaigns. I think they are the most fun. Difficulties. Yes. Oh, advanced options. Allow reverting of flight. Yes, I'll probably need that. Allow quick loading. Nope. Missing crew respawn. Nope. Also high crew members will fight. No. Indestructible facilities. Nope. Well, maybe. Since it's science... Sorry, since it's science mode, it doesn't make any sense because I'll just repair them anyway. Include stock vessels? Nope. Re-entry heat 100% resource. But mm -hmm. Enable comm network. What's hard mode? So get less science, less of that, but it still has comm network. Reverting a flight, no quick save, no missing crew. Missing, no, they don't respawn. Auto hire, no, no, no. Indestructible facilities. Put that to normal. Put that to normal. What do you do with advanced? Allow negative, when negative values. Where the negative values for fonts and signs should be allowed? No. I don't know what that is. Is it on in normal mode? No, it's not on in normal mode. Okay, let's take it from normal and then do it from there. So, reverting flight, no quick saves, no missing crew, crew respawning, indestructible facilities. Wouldn't you start with all the buildings maxed out in science career? Yes, you would. Nope. Okay, apparently not. Ah, yes, that nice sounds nice. Okay, calm network options, yes. Probes require a signal for any control rather than going to partial control when lagging a signal. Yes, we want them. We want that definitely. Plasma. What is this? Enable calm. Links weakening and going down when the link goes through an atmospheric plasma. I don't know. That seems a little hard, maybe. Range multiplier, everything's just like... Enable extra ground stations. No, I don't want that. Because I only want the, the ground station on the space center. I want to build my own network. As, yeah, and everything. Let's accept that. 
And let's call this... I have caps lock on. <laughs> For science. Really? Okay. People are saying that I should not have requests, I should not have that clicked on. So don't select require signal, you won't be able to build a comps network. Okay, let's keep that then, like that then. No quick saving. We will have the comps network, but we will not have the extra. Enable the full set of ground stations. Either do no extra ground stations or require signals. But wouldn't I be able to, that's my point, wouldn't I be able to, if I have no extra ground stations, I have just one radar station at the space center. And if I have require signal, I'll have to bounce the signal from one satellite to the next, to the next, to the next, around the network. That is how I used to play in remote tech. That you would only have access to get that one... And the difficult part was then to get good coverage of your satellites. At least that's how I understand that it would work. Exactly. Do the triangular satellites around the Kerbin and base and then bounce the signal further. Exactly. And I mean, I could build, I could build more of these, um, I could build my own radio stations and put them up around Kerbin if I wanted to. I can't steer the sets in the first place while it's orbiting without ground stations. Okay, so here's my question. If I have a... Uh, let me find something here. This. This is going to be Kerbin, right? So if I have a satellite out, out here, and this station is like in here, or this is the, the space center, right? I have a satellite out here, and I have a satellite down here that is not... I cannot see the space center out here, We'll then be able to bounce the satellite to that satellite, uh, the, the signal to that satellite, and then control this one down here. That's the question. For realism, do extra ground stations and require signal. If I have relay antennas, ah, okay. How does these work? Because that's this is these are all new to me. Let's just put in whatever. Uh, you there. Only certain antennas has relay capabilities. Okay, so if we take a single communitron. Requires antenna type direct, antenna rating, that's how far it will go. Direct, 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 direct. 
Isn't this omnidirectional? So these are relays. Yes, okay, so these can relay signals from one satellite to the next. Same with this one, this one, and this one as well. But do these have to be aimed or are they, because the, these, this one I would expect to be omnidirectional. Antenna range. Combinable. So if I have more, I got more, get more range. You say not in stock carbon. They just aim themselves. Okay, so they are all basically omnidirectional. Okay, remote tech needs me to point antennas, stock curb doesn't. The aiming isn't stuck. Okay, yeah, so four antenna to double the range. Okay, so I, I can't take just two and say, ha, double range. I have to take four of them to get double range. So, now just for fun, let's say I have a Probodone Sputnik thingy by Jack. And now we're just building something here. Uh, thermals, electricity, and Probodone uh, carries a battery, like that. Maybe two batteries, maybe it's gonna carry even four batteries. Three batteries, four batteries. Let's go three batteries. Uh, what is this? Fuel cell. Example, moon mission. Relay set one, relay set two, space center. Exactly, that's exactly what I want. So if I go and say, let's say I put two of these on like so because if they expanded they will look like that and these are going to be carried up by whatever something right and then i take i could then have a snapping i'm snapping Something like that, because when these are then extended, I would have plenty of range. Whoop. Maybe to make it a little bit prettier. Move these like up there, maybe. Use any call except that. <laughs> Why? So I could use this call if I wanted to. What are the difference between all these? Oh, it has no... Ah, no built-in SAS.
How heavy are these? Uh, Can I scroll down? No? How do I see how much that they have SRS? Oh, this has an internal antenna. The cube is a fully functional and uh, lightweight command unit. All the goodness come at a price, however. No, no room for internal reaction wheels. Ah, this is a robo thingy, okay. Though I would really like to know how much they weigh. Where does that curb that axis? Oh, here we go. Oh, here's the mass. 0.1 tons. 0.2 point. Wait, that's nothing. These are very light, though. Okay, so they're all very light. How do I... How do I do that? There we go. Curb that has to do with looking for good mining spots. Okay. So in theory, because we are playing science, these would probably be some of the later ones. But just to understand What's going on here? This one could hold a lot of electricity to charge. So just to make sure I get this. So I could go and I could say, oh, okay, this one will get... Solar panels, not like those, I like these better. And then I could put on... This is direct antenna as well. These are the smallest relay antennas. These have a huge range. Oh, these are the biggest. But that's probably a little bit overkill. 10G. These are actually not too bad in terms of size. So 
So something like this would work, right? Because it has an internal reaction wheel, it can hold lots of power, so it can power itself through the night, and it gets around the dark side of the planet. It has plenty of range. Bandwidth is low though, but the range is very good. And the two guidance unit. They have autopilot, SRS and reaction wheels. Because the thing I like about this particular setup... Raymond, thanks a lot for subscribing. Uh, the thing I like about this particular setup is they're stackable. Because when I need to launch these, what I most likely would do is I would take four or eight of them at the time. And I could basically just stack these with a decoupler in between. Ooh, or maybe even... Wait a second. I could fit docking ports. Like that. Yeah, yeah these are just going to be uh, be communicating within my uh, but yeah, out, out until Minmus, right? Because if I can stack, I can then stack these with docking ports. I can just undock them whenever I need them. Hold Alt to force port to snap. So if I took this off and I was like, oh, you don't, oh, it's crap, it doesn't want to snap. Ah, I see. Thank you. That's going to help me a lot. And then maybe got just for good measures. Just because I like them. Put on small satellite, small antennas like these. Because when these are packed together or folded in like this Whoop. there we go they are fairly small and just stack a lot of these on top of each other I like that okay don't save that's okay this is your sandbox so let's go back no row X to main menu there we go so if we were to start a new one uh, yes science and we want comms network, indestructible facilities, reverting of the flights. Then I could go with a setup like this, because now I have now I can build relay station from one to the next to the next to the next to the next. Which is what I want. I want just one station. Uh, one radio station at the space center, then I want to, to bounce signals around. Let's start this one, because this is probably going to be the one that I'm going to play through. But we probably have, what, nothing to start with. 
basic uh, flea booster. Nothing, nothing. We have some grid segments, no decouplers. Basic fins. Mystery goo and probably a parachute. Yeah. Cool. That's going to be interesting, I think. Because that what I could also do if we go out here to Tracking Station. Zoom in on Kerbin. What we could do... We're not going to start the this one because I want to try and record... Oh, Comp Network. Okay. It's, right now we have the space center here. Right there, right? There's the space center. And what I could do was to build a plane or send something up into orbit and then land. Uh, I could build like landable radio stations. So instead of having the default ones, I could build my own radio stations. Put one here at the North Pole, one at the South Pole. Maybe something here on the other side of the planet somewhere. No, on the East Coast. Oh yeah, over there. Ah oh, yeah, there we are. Okay. That's where we are, of course. Yeah, with the islands out here, of course. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so here we are. But I... And there's the mountain range. Yeah, okay, good. But I could then fly a landable comp satellite. Basically drop them from orbit with a heat shield, ditch the heat shield, parachutes out, land them on the surface. And just let them sit there Let them sit there as their own radio stations. And I know they are not going to be able to communicate with Kerbin, but that means if I have two satellites, let's say I have one out here and out here, they cannot see each other, but they can maybe both see the one at the North Pole. They will to bounce a signal around Kerbin like that. They're not going to be very efficient. But it might help. But again, uh, we would have to... Problem is, if you can see that on the surface, that means you can also see the other satellite on the other side, right? Here's my point. Uh, let's actually get out of Kerbal, or Kerbal Space Program, and I'll show you what I mean. I don't think the surface bases would actually work. Uh, let's very quickly just get GIMP up and running here. Okay. Here's my point. If, uh, if we have Kerbin, which is going to be... Green, very annoying green color. There we go. That's Kerbin. Not very round, I know. But if we have a satellite, let's make a satellite. Uh, let's take. And satellites are black. That's a satellite. That's a satellite. This is a surface station, right? Right there. If we have something where oops if this satellite can see this one if this attack if this is right at the horizon of this one so it can just act just see it and this one can also see it that means they can also see each other Because if this is below the horizon, as this right now, it would not be able to see that station. But it could work as an uh, as an alternative to having a satellite network.
instead of building satellites, you could just build radio stations, which would basically put you back in the situation where you would have the, the stations per default. Hmm, yeah, I'm not sure. It could be an alternative to building the surface, the, the satellite network, instead of just building... Oh, but no, oh, wait. Because if you, you, will, you would need the satellites. You would need stations in orbit and underground. Yeah, I might actually have to get both. I'm not sure if, if it's a good idea with the surface stations. Other than the fact that it's a fun idea to do. Could we get... Okay, let's think here. Can we get into a situation where... Where having that extra station is needed. I mean, we could probably build those a lot bigger than the satellites. So they could have huge, the biggest antennas we could get at the time. I'm not sure. I have to think about it. Anyway, you know what? I'll um, what time is it? Wow, well, it's late. Anyway, I will. <laughs> I'll try to see if I can figure something out. Um, but anyway, I think I'm pretty sure I'm gonna start a Kerbal series and gonna play through the the campaign we just started. Um. Sometimes things at the pole have pr have trouble seeing three satellites. Do you need three satellites? Ah, yeah, but I would build way more than three satellites. What I like about the surface stations, though, is that the, the it's difficult to keep the satellites evenly distributed around the planet. They will sometimes clump up on one side, and they will be there would be a huge mess. Um, but having those fixed would actually increase the coverage of the network, I think. You know what? I will, um, I'll see what I can come up with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Three satellites in geostationary orbit should cover it. Should. But the problem is that you will never get them into a perfect geostationary orbit. So over time, they will begin to drift out of their perfect positions. So I would much rather have a network close to the planet where I can... Uh, Christopher, thanks for subscribing. I would have much rather have a network close to the station, uh, close to the planet, where they would be moving around... Um, rapidly and then just spam them basically just build tons and tons of cube sats just send them up there and spam the whole thing um, but i might actually do both also have the surface stations just to have a little bit extra coverage and then maybe have the surface stations have some of the long range relay antennas might be a good idea as well anyway you know what I'm gonna call it here for for tonight. Thanks a lot for you guys for uh, for watching. I I hope you enjoyed this uh, something a little different. Um, yeah, but uh, yeah, thanks a lot for watching and um, stay tuned to the channel for for more Kerbal Space Program uh, in the future. So uh, I'll see you guys in space.